Hey, what's up guys? Optic Ashes here bringing you another video and today is Monday. So that means today is hashtag Ask Ashes Day. We are on episode 10. That is insane to me that we're on episode 10. Mind blowing. Anyways, let's get right into the questions. As always, the first few questions are going to be from anonymous askers in the DMs. Next couple questions, I'll obviously be reading out the username and then we'll close it out with questions in the comments from last week's video, which means at the end of this video, make sure you leave a comment with your question for next week's video and I'll be sure to answer it in next week's video. All right, question number one asks, do you know if they will be adding leaderboards for ranked in Gears of War? Uh, I do not know. I've heard that they're going to. I do not know one way or another, but it would seem odd if they don't. You know what I mean? It would just seem kind of out of place. Question number two, any tips for someone in the gear scene who wants to become pro? Um, if you really want to become pro, you got to start practicing like you want to become pro. You got to start practicing like you are a current pro because what you're basically doing is you are playing catch up to the people who are already at that upper echelon since that's where you want to be. So you need to be doing in theory double what they're doing, right? Cuz you're you're trying to gain ground, right? You don't you don't catch up to a car that's ahead of you by going the same speed as it. You have to go faster. So um, you need to be grinding out the game and practicing. You need to find a team and play with them so you can get used to playing in a competitive atmosphere. You need to start doing replay reviews. You need to start re uh, reviewing your own games and your own footage so that you can identify your own mistakes. Uh, and then on top of that, study other teams and other players and see what they do right and wrong so you can then incorporate the right into your gameplay while avoiding the wrong. Those are some great tips to help you become a pro. Question number three, do you love me? Well, the person who asking is not my girlfriend, so no, in a romantic way, but yes, in a I very much appreciate you way. Question number four comes from IRXTE who asks, best advice to someone who recently started playing Gears due to the hype around the Optic Gears team and wants to start climbing ranks. If you're only looking to climb ranks, I'm still confused by the system, but what I'm thinking is accurate is that the games rank you up based on how many points you get which means if you're playing like escalation play anchor because you automatically get a hill cap every single round and if you play anchor well you can probably get a hill break and another cap every single round and you know as long as you move around your spot so uh and in pressure the other team's home hill so play for points while also contributing for the win i don't know if it takes wins or losses into account i know I played for the Hills one day, I went 1-5 and five and I ranked up from Onyx 2 to Onyx 3. So I'm, I'm baffled by the system, but um, there's that. If you're looking to go competitive, see the answers to question number 2. I just rewind the video. In fact, refresh the entire page and look at question number 2. Question number 5 comes from at 83F7E175F8304BB, who asks... Can you give an overview on best solo queue practices and how to succeed when playing alone? And then they put a frowny face and that they have no friends and stuff like that. So, uh, sorry about that. Play for your team, be fluid, be able to adapt. And obviously you got to play hard because you might have to carry. Uh, you're going to have a serious lack of communication. So you have to be very aware of your surroundings and just, you know, be on top of your game. Basically, you have to put a lot of energy into it when you're playing alone to make up for that lack of communication and to be able to keep track of the other team while also keeping track of your own play. So focus up, have high awareness and, uh, you know, play for your team and filling in where they need you to fill. Question number six comes from at whiz underscore reality who asks if you could play any esports besides gears, what would it be? Um, I would definitely go into League of Legends again. I was in League of Legends before. I loved that game. I would probably go back into it unless I got some kind of deal where I could work with the Halo team or the Call of Duty team for Optic because I think it'd be fun to work with those guys. But um, I'm really familiar with League of Legends, so I'd probably go back to League. Question number seven comes from at Troll408 who asks, how do you guys stay humble while winning so much or are you not? I'd like to say we're pretty humble. You know, we're not really the type to go on Twitter and brag about our record. We don't really... Uh, you know, talk trash outside of game. It's, you know, anything that we say is purely in game. It's not outside of game. And, you know, we keep to ourselves. I think we really stay humble because we know that our work is what's helping us be so successful. And that the minute that we start taking that for granted and start slacking on that work ethic because of an ego, then that'll be the minute that we start getting 
beat that we start faltering in our play and that we start playing poorly and not being happy with who we are and what we're doing. So as long as we're striving to continually improve ourselves, there's no real time to develop an ego because we're always identifying our own mistakes and knowing that we can work harder towards more goals. So it's just keeping the right mindset. It, it's true in any competitive sport or esport. Question number eight comes from at Chronic Zero who asks, OK, Ashes Ketchum, clever. What's your favorite Pokemon game if you've ever played it? Have I ever played it? What? What kind of rock do you think I live on? Okay, whatever. Uh, my favorite Pokemon game has to be Pokemon Blue version, like the OG Pokemon Blue version, because that was my very first Pokemon Game Boy game. I started off with Squirtle because obviously Blastoise was on the, the you know, the sticker on the little Game Boy cartridge. And I played the ever living hell out of that game. Uh, so I loved that game. That'll forever be my favorite Pokemon game. Um, yeah. Question number nine comes from at Marceline underscore XO who asks, what's something you love doing for the Gears community? Also, what do you love about your team? Something I love doing for the Gears community is creating content because I feel like it's my way to give back to you guys as well as further better myself in an avenue that I want to be able to be better at. You know, I want to be able to express myself and create content that I see you guys enjoy and then receive that criticism and, and continually just improve this whole process. So it's something that I really enjoy doing and I think it helps make the scene grow. And I I love when I see people who message me or comment on my videos or talk to me in my stream who say, you know, I've bought Gears of War and I'm really enjoying it because of you or I've gotten really better at wall bouncing because of your video and stuff like that. So seeing that kind of stuff come back to me is probably one of the most amazing amazing feelings in the world and uh, that's something I really love doing for the Gears community. What do I love about my team? I love the family atmosphere in this team. You know, I've been with these guys for about a year and it literally feels like I'm with a bunch of little brothers and that's who I work with. It's, you know, they can get on your nerves, they can pick on you and, <laughs> and bully you because they outnumber me. But at the end of the day, like I know that we all have a mutual respect for each other and that there's a bond between us that feels like a family atmosphere. And it's it's something that I wouldn't trade, you know, for anything. Question number 10 comes from at Weasel Despec, who asks actually a lot of questions. What are your thoughts on how the gear scene and game are currently? Do you see it getting better? What do you think could possibly get worse? And finally, what do you hope to see get better? All right, I'm going to answer these one at a time. In terms of how the gear scene is currently, I think that the the esports scene is awesome. I think that Jack Felling is doing an amazing job and the coalition is doing an amazing job and MLG is doing an amazing job at making Gears esports uh an entity, making it something that you can see growing every day with every competition. You can see the viewership numbers growing, you can see the number of participants growing and giving my guys and myself something to do as a job is just phenomenal and the fact that we're going to be traveling the world for it soon is even more mind-blowing as for the game itself i think the game gameplay wise is the best gears game that i've ever played and i'm very biased towards gears of war 2 because that was the one i've spent by far the most amount of hours on but I think there's a lot of really, really detrimental flaws to the game in terms of how the matchmaking works and the rank system works and the quitter non-penalty existing uh, works that if not fixed soon, like within the next few weeks, could be extremely detrimental to the entire Gears of War community, both as an esport and just as a general game. Because right now, people don't want to play gears and that's kind of the sad reality like you know we all play it because we love the game the the franchise but i don't think we're playing it because we actually love the in-game experience whereas that's what you want to focus on you want people to play your game because they love the in-game experience not because they love the franchise and you know that's what they're committed to do you see it getting better absolutely yes because i think the coalition hears our cries and that's something that they've proven they're very good at and i think that all these things will be fixed and added to to make the game have that captivating sense that a triple a title should have what do you think could possibly get worse i never really i don't really think there's going to be a backwards uh, movement towards Gears of War. I think every every patch is going to make the game progress forward. So I don't really think anything's going to get worse, per se. Finally, what do you hope to see get better? 
rank system, matchmaking, and a lever quitter thing so that I can actually play a 5v5 game. Tomorrow's video, I think, should show my experiment that I did on stream, uh, or at least the highlights from it, and it's <laughs> it's something. Question number 11 comes from at Dovey Pones, who asks, how do you like the pro point system, or do you think a system like League's Challenger series will work better? I personally believe that the pro point system that MLG do is doing is much better than League's Challenger system, and honestly, League's Challenger system has been and is currently a complete detriment to amateur League of Legends. League of Legends is very much, you are here or you are here, as in like there is these eight or ten teams now that are on a pedestal way up here above everybody else, and then there's this just plateau conglomerate of of just players who are struggling the claw at the feet of the pros up here but it get ignored because it's all about who you know and it, it sucks there's there's i worked in it for four years it sucks because there's no way for people to climb their way up yet but riot games is currently fixing that with their um whatever this new pool thing is that they're doing uh where they're inviting the top talent to play in this thing I, I don't i don't quite quite like quite follow it or understand it um but they're making strides to fix this problem that's been ongoing for a couple years now and that is a really good sign because that is what is holding their game back from from just being like the all-time goat which it sort of already is but it's not perfect for gears of wars point system I would like to see the 250s drawn back a little bit. This is just me personally. I feel like teams should have time where they can scrim or have days that they can take off. But like right now, we compete in a tournament literally every single day, assuming that we can make it to the finals of the 2K. So we have a 250 Monday, a 250 Tuesday, the finals of the 2K on Wednesday, 250 Thursday, 250 Friday, 250 Saturday, and a 2K on Sunday that then transfers, if we make it to the finals, over to the next Monday. So it's just constant tournaments and there's no point where we can just go into a scrim environment and practice things that we want to practice without having the risk of, you know, wasting money or losing pro points on it. Question number 12 comes from at extra fart who asks, uh, what's your favorite gears game out of the whole series? The current game is my favorite of the whole series, but there are a lot of things that I would like to see fixed slash changed. Question number 13 comes from at real Dom Holland who asks, can you ask Hex if he will ever make an Overwatch team or invest in one? I cannot. It is not my place. I don't have any say in upper management or what Optic does as an organization. I would love that job. I would love to be a general manager, but uh, it's not my place. I just work with the Gears of War team and stream and make YouTube videos. Question number 14 comes from at shoddy639 who asks, what is your greatest fear? Uh, go Go into my YouTube videos and see why, like click the video that says like why I can't play on Harbor or Coach Harbor or something like that because that basically describes my biggest fear and it's actually a pretty funny video. Question number 15 comes from at plasmas underscore bolt who asks, what are your favorite games to play other than Gears? I've been playing a lot of H1Z1 lately with friends. Uh, I played some CSGO with uh, Mental and Kenny. Um, still League of Legends is up there. So those are kind of the main three right now other than Gears. All right, now we're going to answer some questions from the YouTube comments from last week's video, episode nine. Uh, Joshinator711 asks, will you visit the Optic House anytime soon? I don't have anything in the plans yet. I would love to. I'm just kind of waiting for them to say it's, you know, I'm allowed. DJ said asks, the highlight moment of your career in Gears competitive gaming and why? Probably winning our first MLG event back in Gears of War UE because that was like the event that showed who the best team was in Ultimate Edition, like bar none, end of discussion, who is the best team. And it was also my first time winning an MLG event, even though I'm a coach, like I still consider it a win. So that was like a huge thing for me because it was always a dream of mine. And I, that was like the most emotional I've gotten. So that was probably the biggest uh, and are the biggest or best highlight of my Gears career, other than like joining Optic Gaming. And I'm not saying that to be a, a kiss ass or a sellout. It's just that's another dream come true uh question from david moore who asks has there ever been a team splitting argument in your team actually when i first joined this team back in september of 2015 i think like october or november of that month or that year there was an argument that lasted from like 9 p.m till 3 a.m and i had actually like kind of gone to bed because i thought it was cooling down and this is before i was coaching them 
and I woke up because my phone was just going nuts uh, in our DM group about like this argument continuing. And uh, I I wrote probably like a, a good seven or eight paragraph long wall of text to these guys calling them out on a lot of stupid things that they were doing. And that was kind of like the moment where I think that was the last time where we had a major argument, like literally the last time that there's been any kind of like team splitting argument. And I, I'm sure the guys remember this because it, it was really ridiculous in hindsight. But yeah, that was that was the only one in a year that I've seen or been a part of. Uh, Ethan Rays asks, is gaming your full-time job or do you have another part-time real job? Uh, gaming and esports right now is kind of my full-time job. Um, I'm hoping to make content creation like a supplement to that to, so that like it can actually be like all of this can be just, you know, full-time for me. Uh, I do own a donut shop, but I think uh, like I, I'm leaving it to my parents now so that they can retire on it and I can, you know, focus on esports. Uh, so I don't have like a, a real job right now it's just esports and coaching and content creation uh anarchy for the soul asks not necessarily specific to you guys but what are some of the main strategies employed in gears of war uh it's kind of hard to answer that question but it is something that i do want to kind of cover in a video in general so make sure you are subscribed because that is something i will cover i know this is kind of a bullshit answer but i just want you to know that i am going to cover it i just i don't have time to really go into that in this video but it will be in another video Hayes J16 asks, what are your thoughts on Gear's recent success as an eSport? Why do you think the scene is blowing up? Million dollar prize pool, massive orgs getting involved, developer support, brand new game. Like all of those things kind of coming together helped Gear's eSports kind of blow up at the beginning of this whole, well, I guess it's near the end of the year, but the beginning of this whole experience. And uh, because of all of that, Gear's eSports has had a great start. And my prediction is it'll kind of plateau a little bit, maybe drop a little bit, and then kind of take back off again when people realize that Gears Esports is not just like a one-time thing, but can be here to stay. Chang X34 asks, what is your subscriber goal by the end of this year? If you're talking like January 1st of like, what do I want to see that number be? I'd love to hit 5K. Um, if it's like a year from this point, you know, 10K, 20K would be like God tier. John Lannister asks, Hey Ashes, I got a question for you. I've always been curious as to why the alternate control scheme is so rarely used among pro players. I can only think of like two to three players from the top eight teams that actually use it off the top of my head. All of the teams use default, including you guys. Surely alternate would give you a significant advantage over your opponents in fights since you would never miss roll. So why do more pros choose default over alternate? Um, honestly, it's all personal preference. I know my guys play claw. So it helps them with the being able to move quickly because they can hit all of the buttons that they need to hit at one time or simultaneously. Uh, as for the whole misrolling thing, I think it's just because like they all have like this habit of being able to do this and it would add it, it would go against like the grain basically to try to relearn it where there's two buttons kind of separating those two commands um, because misrolling is a lot more rare in like, you know, the upper tier play, most players are really good at, you know, recognizing how far they are from a roll and uh, how far they are from a wall and whether they're going to roll or not. Uh, Seth Thurman asks, what is your thought? Uh, Seth Thurman asks, what are your thoughts on trash talking in Gears of War? Uh, I think it's good. I think it's hype. I think it builds storylines. I think that the community or the attention or the people who are new, they, I think the people who are new to Gears of War kind of overreacted on it a little bit because they're not used to it. But uh, as long as it's, you know, behind, like a, there's a line that you can't cross. As long as nobody crosses that line, I think it's fine. Finally, we have a question from Master of All Halo who asks, do you think Gears of War should have more than one competitive game type? I do not. And I only think that because Escalation was designed from the ground up for esports. It's not like a traditional game type. It's something that was built specifically with esports in mind. So I think because of that reason, escalation can sustain the the esports culture of gears of war pretty successfully because it has everything it needs it has it's fast paced but it's also strategic it requires macro play micro play uh strong mechanics good teamwork good communication all of that stuff all right guys that's going to do it for this video if you enjoyed make sure to leave a thumbs up because it really helps the video and also click the subscribe button down below helping my channel grow every single day i really appreciate the support guys you guys have been awesome we're almost at 3k subscribers at the point of me recording this which is mind-blowing um 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you leave those comments with your questions in the comment section below for the next video. And speaking of the next video, that's when I'll see you guys. Have a good one or something. I don't I really messed up this outfit.